Here we go. Okay, so uh, David Ross of Ross Video. Uh, we're here at uh, Simply 17 in Sydney. Yep. And I, I, I guess what what's the Ross story at the show this week? Oh boy. Uh, well, uh, we launched uh, quite a few products at uh, NEB not too many months ago, and uh, most of them are shipping now. And I think that's one of the big stories. Sometimes they say, you know, you know, show at NEB and ship at IBC, but uh, it's even more impressive to be able to show at NEB and ship at Simpty. Uh -huh. So uh, one of the big ones uh, is uh, our new graphite uh, all-in-one production system. So what we're talking about there is uh, the same box that we have our expression system in, but we, uh, we replace the I.O. card with a carbonite PCIe card instead that is a 2ME production switcher with uh, lots of inputs and outputs, with uh, uh, mini me's, uh, with uh, with an audio professional audio, you know, high-end audio mixer as well, built in with lots of I/O and external analog I/O that you can plug into it as well, and uh, and, and of course uh, servers and playback all in this one box. And we really felt that there was a market for something a little bit higher end, but actually at the same price as what you'd find other all-in-ones at. Uh, because most of those systems end up needing a higher end graphics, they end up wanting to have a, uh, a hardware based uh, switcher in case they have to reboot the system and they don't want to lose their signal. I mean, about live production, yeah, reliability is a pretty important thing. So uh, with our system, we're actually able to reboot uh, the entire platform and be able to um, have it come back up uh, uh, without affecting the video going through it because we have a hardware-based hardware -based switcher inside the box. So we launched that at any at any B, one best of show, and uh, here we are shipping them now. Okay. So, and, and what's what's the reaction been to to that? Uh, there's been a certain amount of shock and awe uh, yeah. because there's never been a product like that before, uh, especially as, a, as an all-in-one box uh, with a you know uh, with a, a brand name graphics workflow with a brand name production switcher. You can connect any one of the production switcher control panels from the Carbonite series, or use the soft panel, and, and it just works. Uh, and pretty much every broadcaster uh, we, we've talked to said, "I have a use for that. <laughs> you know, I could use." Somebody else will say I, have, I could use ten of those, so uh, we're pretty excited about that, and I think it's uh, something that really only Ross could have done. Uh, we also uh, launched uh, also some new things like our, our new uh, robotic uh, pedestals. We we had the 700, which was uh, almost like a Clydesdale workhorse. It could handle, you know, have, handle really really heavy loads and things like that. And uh, but people are starting to move to. Um, PTZs on sticks basically and putting in a whole bunch of those because the price performance for robotics versus having more cameras started to shift people in the other direction. So we said, okay, how do we get a less expensive but still the same quality uh, uh, XY pedestal uh, for those customers? And uh, since NAB, uh, when we launched our new 600 series, uh, where there's two versions of that at uh, almost like 40% cheaper. I, I don't quote me on that, but it's it's in that order. Uh, people who were about to put in a bunch of uh, cameras on sticks are now putting in uh, XY robotics, and they're extremely happy about the new flexibility that they get out of that. We did more. We uh, do tell. Yeah, we uh, it, 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 we launched our new Inception Cloud service as well. Uh, so uh, we have customers now that are. Uh, doing newsroom systems in the cloud, uh, on top of the fact that uh, Inception also, of course, works on-premise as well. So uh, it really showed our commitment to newsroom systems. Uh, and then, uh, well, in, in Ultrix, uh, which is our uh, UHD 3G SD routing system uh, with, uh, you know, 1,200 uh, pip multiviewers inside of 2RU, uh, 72 in, UHD, 72 out, UHD, that product got frame syncs on every input which is impressive uh, because we already had a, uh, what was it, 1536 by 1536 audio matrix in it. And when you put a frame set on something that has audio, well, you need sample rate conversion if you want to be able to not drop frames of audio. And we put that in too on every single UHD input on every single source, you know, for the, for the, uh, for the router. And that was, uh, that was launched at, and we're at uh, NAB and we're showing it now as well. So we're doing a whole bunch of things. Uh, most of our products, we're able to show uh, dedicated 12 gig interfaces, uh, and which is great. Uh, we've been talking about for um, for fly packs, for small studios, production, things like that. If you want to go big, 
Well, the big talk right now is 2110, being able to do IP. And so we're showing uh, 2110 and uh, quite a few of our products as well, particularly in, in our graphics. We're also talking about it in our switchers uh, and uh, particularly the Acuity switcher. And uh, we, in open gear, we're showing a, a card called Raptor, which is a bridge between SDI and 2110 and back again. And being able to take six, six signals in, six signals out inside of, uh, and you can put five of those inside of a 2RU frame. So uh, we think it's a pretty compact, cost-effective, powerful platform. Uh, one of the things that we did in that product as well is where we added some extra processing capability. So not only is it a conversion top of rack system, but it's also, you know, someday it'll probably have things like gears and up-down converters and things like that in as well, adding extra value to the hardware that's bringing legacy sources into an IP world. Now you're the, the topic of your presentation at the conference here was um, 12, 12, 12 gig, gig SDI or, or IP, IP question mark. So um, what, what, what are you trying to encapsulate in that question? Oh, well it's, it's a big deal. Uh, I mean there's, there's a lot of confusion that's going on in the industry, especially like should I go IP? Should, you know, uh, if I'm, and if you, but if you're concerned with say being future proof, uh, then, um, well, what are you being future proof from? Well, usually it's going 4K. So, so if you want, if you're really worried about 4K, then UHD, you know, 12 or 12 gig will, will get you there mm -hmm. and still be compatible with everything you do today, whether it's uh, 1080p or 1080i. Uh, so, one of the things I was trying to get to is where's the breaking point where it's economically or technically required to start considering IP versus you're crazy to do IP, you know, it's, it's easier to do it in, in, uh, in SDI. And so I, I went through a number of the, the, the technology background on that, but also started comparing something like an Ultrix router, which it can do 72 in, 72 out, uh, and also do uh, multi-viewers, so it's a processing router, and also doing audio, and then saying, well, if we're trying to do that in 2110, well, you'd need an outboard multi-viewing box, you'd need outboard audio processing, but you wouldn't have to do the disc embedding, re-embedding because IP sends them in separate streams. So you get a savings over there, but at the same time, you have so many signals uh, you, uh, that, uh, that are coming from originating devices that you don't want to connect directly into the core switch or you're going to be wasting a whole lot of bandwidth. So you want to aggregate, which means that now you need top of racks. Well, how many top of racks equivalent or equivalent to an Ultrix? So I, I went through that and showed that it turned out to be, you know, five twenty thousand dollar top of racks going into a core switch before you even got to do any functionality, and then you had Ultrix and two RU. Uh, so I was able to show that for fly packs and smaller sm smaller installations, you know, you can do it for a fraction of the price in UHD in 12 gig SDI. But when you want to go to, you've got a multi-studio, large infrastructure, uh, you know, a major television facility, you just can't get there uh, with, with, uh, with a UHD system, you know, and a traditional SDI router. So I, it's just kind of interesting to show both, and it, and it is also useful for customers to see that Ross is investing heavily in both, because you could argue that there's lots of money in big big facilities, but there's also a lot of small fly packs, a lot of small churches, legislatures, you name it, and there's a market in both areas, and I think they both have extremely different needs. Well, how long do we get to the tipping point, as it were? Ah, you know, I actually think uh, in some ways it's going to be a very long time to actually do a complete tipping point. And one of the things I talked about in my presentation is, you know, if you're going to have a core switch, which typically doesn't do any processing, almost by definition, it doesn't do any processing. That means, and, and it's fiber optics coming in and out, that means you have to have fiber optics for everything that's coming out of that core switch into some processing device and then back into the core switch again. So you're, you're you know, even at 100 gig, depending on what you're doing, uh, you're talking about a lot of fibers, cables, uh, and, and uh, uh, SFPs. So inside of a, an all-in-one box, when you're running in UHD inside of a single box, you're actually doing it all inside of a single chip, like an FPGA, where the, you've got a sea of transistors, and the connectivity between all the different functions is effectively free. 
So, so when you start thinking about the the needs uh, of IP and, and where the switching is separated from the processing, uh, there's an inherent overhead that's required. So it may be a while until people just can't buy UHD anymore, and that could be a while, you know, in, in over, over SDI, it could be a while before that actually happens. So I know. Well, I thought it was an interesting presentation. <laughs> well, <laughs> I should hope so. Uh, now, uh, in uh, over the last 12 months, you opened offices in Singapore and Sydney. Yeah, uh, and, and in fact, we also expanded our office in uh, in London, England, which I know okay. is outside of your geographic area. But yeah. let me tell you, my CFO noticed that we offered open three major offices in one year. Okay. <laughs> so, what uh, what is the underlying strategy? What what's that for? The reasoning, as opposed to leaving it just to dealer channels and, and so forth. Uh, well, I mean, even with all the uh, the, uh, the bids and tenders and everything else and the formalities that can go on in any region, in the end, people are buying from people. People are developing trust. They want relationship. They want to be able to pick up the phone and know that somebody's in their time zone. They they, they want to be able to look somebody in the eye and say, "Will this work? Can you deliver this?" Uh, and, and go directly to uh, the manufacturer that's ultimately supplying the gear. So we're not doing this to cut out in any way our business partners. They're, they're absolutely critical to, to how we do business uh, in, in Asia, but uh, uh, it's, it's really showing you know, uh, that we're here to make those relationships, to be able to look them in the eye and support them. And uh, it's also uh, a really good sign of just how much business we're now doing in Asia. I mean, uh, the, the the office that we opened up in Singapore uh, was it's like four stories tall. I mean, uh, it's it's quite something and, and a little eclectic actually. The guys were having a lot of fun when they, they designed. If, if you uh, if you want to go visit us in, uh, in in Singapore, you'll know what I mean. Uh, uh, but. Uh, I, it's, it's actually quite brilliant. And, and here in Australia now, we've just opened the Sydney office, and again, uh, they did such a great job on, on just the, the, the look of that facility. We were the first one into the uh, the, the bay, I guess, uh, where there's a whole bunch of new ones. And from what I, when I understand, all the other tenants who are not in broadcast have co copied the look of Ross like all it. the way across, which I, I think is uh, uh, Amanda, who, who handles this locally, uh, should be really praised on that. So what um, the the local offices are obviously providing support to the the dealer channels and and, and a demonstration and facility and it's also giving us uh, the uh, uh, a place for our, our tech support people to work out of uh, it's a place for us to keep spare spare parts uh, and. Uh, just a, a, a great place to meet up with our customers and our business partners and things like that. One thing that's interesting about this is, you know, you could argue whether we did it the right or the wrong way, we built these facilities uh, because we had the business already to support it. Th these weren't investments in the future and we hope it works and if it doesn't work we're going to pull out. We had so much business that it was uh, a no-brainer actually to, to build these facilities. Okay. So we're, uh, I guess we're coming up to IBC, and you, you mentioned uh, launch at NAB, uh, ship at IBC. Yeah. Uh, is is there anything that uh, is going to be brand new at IBC, or uh, what? What's the theme of the of the show going to be for you? Oh boy, um, there will be new products, uh, and uh, we we. We actually have something called a no vaporware policy, in that uh, we don't like to announce a product uh, unless it's going to be shipping, you know, in an extremely short period of time. The fact that we actually shipped, uh, we're, we're, you know, we, uh, we're talking about uh, by uh, by Simpty that we're shipping the graphite product, for example. I mean, that's a little unusual in some ways. Where we, to me, that's late. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so uh, I can't do that if I announce it uh, on this program right now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and and of course. One of the things is things change, and we don't want to launch something that if we find a glitch, you know, we want to wait and iron it out before we show it and, and affect customers' plans and then not be able to deliver. So uh, I think that's a fairly unique thing about Ross in this industry is uh, 
in some ways, you know, you don't see everything about where we're going next, but when we show it, it works, it's solid, and, and we don't shoot ourselves in the foot along the way. But what I can say in general uh, is there's at least three different things that are going on in the industry. You know, uh, people want, are, want to know what's going on in UHD, they want to know what's going on in 12 gig SDI, uh, they want to know what's going on in IP and they want to see new products on that, and some of them just want to stay in SDI and run, run in 1080i or 720p, but they want next generation products. So, uh, and if, if all we did was worry about IP or just worry about 12 gig SDI, then, uh, then those customers are going to be left out as well. So we actually have to push technology fronts in three or four different areas simultaneously. As a manufacturer, it's, a, it's kind of a crazy time in our industry, to be quite honest, I mean, having, to, having to pick what to do next. This has been a public service announcement. You know, and none, nothing that she's saying really matters to you right now. It's just for us. She's, at least it's not in Canada right now. Because if it was in Canada, you now have to hear it in French. <laughs> at least it's only in one language. Not, not that there's anything wrong with French, I'm just saying it's an interruption twice. <laughs> so, so anyway, getting back to what you're talking about, as a manufacturer, we have to worry about next generation uh, uh, HD, next generation UHD, and 2110, and 12 gig interfaces all at the same time. As a customer, it can be bewildering what to do next, but then you only have to choose one. But we have to make all of them simultaneously make, be competitive around the world. I don't think we've ever had as much of a challenge uh, keeping up with technology in our, as not just Ross, I think industry-wide. Uh, some players have doubled down on IP. Other ones are way behind an IP and maybe working on some other technology. But uh, to try to be in the forefront of all of them is uh, uh, it's, it's not for the meek. Yeah. So, uh, Sydney, Singapore offices, um, I'm wondering about North Asia, uh, I guess China specifically. Yep. What, um, what your footprint there is like or uh, what, how you see that market. Oh, well, talking about China, uh, absolutely. Um, we have a number of employees in China now, and uh, uh, we did listen to our CFO this time, and we decided to make the China office next, uh, heading into our next uh, financial year, which starts in November. So uh, we're already planning out the, the, uh, the, the next facility, bricks and mortar, for, uh, for China, which will be in Beijing. In Beijing, okay. Yeah. And, and will, it, uh, have, uh, will there be a similar functions Absolutely. to the other yep. offices? It, it will be a sales, tech support, uh, demo demonstration area, spare parts, um, uh, working with both our, our business partners as well as our customers. Okay. It's, a, it's a pretty pretty good combination. Okay, and mostly local staff or? All uh, local staff, yeah. All local staff. Yep. All right, and, and as... We don't, we don't parachute in a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, what uh, are there any particular, I guess, unique challenges about that market that you're uh, anticipating or coming up against? Oh boy, unique challenges. Uh, in some ways, there, there's unique challenges. In other ways, there aren't. I mean, there's pressures for discount. There's people that that care more about what the discount is than the final price. Uh, that, that seems to happen a bit in China, uh, yeah. and uh, we're still a one priceless company. Uh, I know that some people have gotten around that by coming up with the Asia price list and then just to give you a 50% discount right off the bat. Right. Uh, we don't do that. Maybe we should. Tell us if we should, uh, and I, if that helps. I don't know. But uh, we like to have an idea of, of what the price is going to be. Um, from the point of view of technology, in China there's, there's more local technology than there is anywhere else that you don't see anywhere else and, and you suddenly come up with a Chinese newsroom system or a Chinese character generator and and uh, and it's like oh that's interesting and they don't follow MOS or they don't follow some other protocols so so integrating with some of these devices uh, and working through with the new new technical partnerships that can be uh, that, that's that's a little bit new because it is a little bit of a different world in China than it is everywhere else for sure. All right, so uh, that's coming November, you said? Well, or after it, will, it will, will not happen before November, yeah. Okay, all right. 
I think that about covers it off. So um, thanks for your time. I appreciate your time too. Thank you. Bye-bye.